All right, right now we're looking at lesson two, logical thinking. So this is lesson two from the Stencils Educators Kit, uh, the second kind of tutorial. And what do we mean by logical thinking? Well, we're looking in this activity, we're looking at those a lot of those blocks. Remember we looked in the events and we made these different blocks. So we're looking uh, the block coding. We're looking at that more in depth. So just if we quickly look at our objective for this lesson and our outcome. Uh, our objective, introduce students to logical thinking through programming. Students will learn the following concepts. How do computers work? Control flow. How, compute, how programs run. Conditionals. If, else, elf, if, else, if. Boolean statements. Logical operators. Equals, then, or not. So the outcome of the class, students will create a four-directional movement script from scratch. So that means they'll have a character, and they'll be able to move it up, down, left, right. So if we kind of break down, like, how do computers work? You know, I'm, I'm moving my mouse around, I click, you know, I press different keys, and there's a response, right? So there's some input from the user, and there's some output. But you think about that input, right? Say if I if I am playing a game, and I and I want to jump, I press the jump button. So there needs to be some sort of code that, that the program needs to read something as if it says if the jump key is pressed, then the player jumps up. Right? The player uh, it moves moves upwards. So you see, there's that that if statement, right? And that's a huge thing in regular programming, letter regular coding, and it's a huge thing in the kind of logical thinking that, that we'll be doing. Um, so that'll unfold as we look further in this activity. So let's pull up the student activity. Let's open up Stencil. I'll move this to the left side and I'll move this to the right. Here we go. First thing we need to do, oh, so I'm open up in the lesson one. You just have to make sure you go file close game and that closes your previous game. And what you need to do is import, if you haven't already, go import project 2. Okay, so I'm just going to open up project 2 and make sure everything's there. Okay, cool. So we look at project 2, we see we have one actor, um, we have a scene, we have sounds, the tile set, but uh, there's no behaviors, no actor behaviors, no scene behaviors. We open up our, our actor. Yeah, no behaviors. And oh, right. So again, we go to events. There's nothing there. No behaviors. And what we want to start off as. Um, we were talking about if statements and stuff like that. So before we get into um, what's going on here. Um, again, on our palette here, there's a bunch of different things, right? And it might get, you know, it might be hard to find, you know, what you want. The cool thing is you can always click on the search button and you can type in something. So if, so if I wanted an if, type in that and then it'll come up here. Um, also, the if statements are under flow. So this is all conditionals. So if something is happening, um, something else will happen, and so on. So we, what first thing we want to do is add an event. And the kind of event we want to do is when updating. So that means this is something that happens all the time. So again, if we look under our events, we have input from a keyboard. We have time. We have all of we have all these other ones. You know, maybe after so many seconds, you want something to happen. Um, when something is created, you want something else to happen. But right now, we just want something to be always active. And do okay. So we want if a certain key is pressed, then we want something else to, to happen. So, well, the key is pressed. Well, that's something to do with the user, right? That's that's you. That's the person using the game. They're doing the input, so I look at user input right here. Control is is down. That looks like something that we want. So one thing you might notice from these different blocks, we have these different these puzzle pieces fit in different ways, right? 
Um, and also, just from looking at this tutorial, it says right here um, that you want to use the use set x speed under actor motion. Okay, so I'll go to actor, go to motion, set x speed to zero. Here we go. This is the one that we want. All right, so we see that there's different sizes, right? This here, it's not going to fit anywhere there. And if the only th when you test your game, only whatever's in here will actually uh, will actually run. So if I test my game here, these things aren't connected. Nothing, nothing's going to be happening. So it won't be very exciting. So we just look here. Our guys there. You can try to move keys. Nothing is happening. So let's set it up. If control is down, so you can see it kind of highlights as we bring it across. There we go. If choose control, well, let's go move to the right. If right is down, so that means if you're holding the right key down, then whatever's inside of this if uh, block, that will happen. So if this is true, then do this. Okay, set x speed to, well, I want to move to the right. And if you remember, Please take a look at our scene. And remember, to the right is positive for x direction, to the left is negative. Down is positive for y, up is negative for y. So we want to move to the right so it's going to be positive. And they suggest setting the speed to 10. So let's try that out. And for self, that's because right now I'm, I'm in the hero event. So self will be, well, to the hero. So I'll test this again, then I'll take a look at here while that's compiling. Okay, so it says to do this. Alright, so our guy is there. I move to the right. Look at that, that's exciting. Except, you know what, my key is actually, um, was, I just tapped my key and it continued to move to the right. So there's a problem there. So it says if right is down, then do this. But then it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say, well, once you let go, do something else. You start off stationary because the right key isn't down. But when the right key is down, it stays on this line. It, say, it stays, the code reads this, and it continues with this. So we need something else. We need to say something that says, well, if the right key is down, we'll move to the right. Um, but if the right key is not down, if that is false, we need to be stationary. We want to be stationary. Okay, so let's see right here. Well, they give a little hint. Maybe you want to use otherwise. Okay, so let's take a look at flow. This has all our conditionals. Um, yeah, let's use otherwise. Let's try that out. Otherwise what? Well, I want to use the same statement. I mean, I can look it up here. But there's a little little hint here. So if you hold on Alt, hold on Alt. Right now I have it pressed down and it's held. And I click on this and look at that, it copies it. Beauty. So that makes life a lot easier. You can copy, I can even copy this whole big block right here. Um, if you don't want it, you click and hold, throw it in the trash. Another another um, another hint is or not hint, but a, a tip is if you have a bunch of these these blocks, it's kind of like, you know, you want to get rid of them rather than going one at a time all the way to the trash. You can hold on control and press K, you know, for cleanup with the K, because that's how cleanup is spelled. Okay, so otherwise, set X speed to, well, let's set it to zero, because we don't want it to move anymore. Let's test the game, see what happens. So again, game design, it's a, it's a iterative process. So what does that mean, iterative? That means you do make little changes, you test the game, you go back and forth. Okay, so I move to the right, and I stop, that is great. So it's working, it is working. So there's a couple of different ways to, you know, I have one direction, I wanna do four directions. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, I encourage you to, to explore this. I don't wanna give you the full answer because there's no point, you know, you're not gonna be learning much if, uh, if you just copy it off me, um, 
but in class I will I will uh, help you out a bit. Okay, one one little hint. One little hint is um, you might want to be using this otherwise if. Okay, because one thing when I was first doing this, I was thinking about using you know if right is down, do this, otherwise this. Okay, and then I went if left is down. Oops. Let me see. Make sure you put the block underneath. If left is down, and I was holding on Alt there to copy it. Left is down. Well, do this, and I want to go negative because I'm going the other direction. And I'm like, well, I'll just copy this as well. Otherwise, this. And well, I tried this out. And it didn't really turn out all that well because I was going to the right. Let's just try it out. So I can't go to the right, but I can go to the left. So why is that? Well, the issue is that we have these otherwise blocks, right? So we're saying, well, if this is happening, do this. Otherwise, do this. If this is happening, do this, otherwise do this. So we have kind of two sets of if, right? And I think it just kind of confuses the program. Um, it confuses the program that these aren't connected. When you when you have the otherwise, it kind of uh, ends this this block of if. It's saying if this is true, do this. If this is false, do this. Okay. If this is true, do this. If this is false, do this. But since um, just the way it's set up. It only does whatever's on the bottom here. It looks at this and it kind of skips over this. So, one little tip for you: um, you want to use this otherwise if. So, what that does, you put that in between. If this is happening, if this is true, do this. Otherwise, if this is true, do do this. Do whatever you put in there. Otherwise, x equals zero. Okay, so actually I'll, I'll, I'll complete this for you and then you can do, I'll, I'll leave the up and down for for you. Whoops, you want that to be in there. And see, that's a problem. I'm, I'm clicking and both of them are, are attaching. What's what's the problem there? Well, if you hold on shift, then you can actually select one of these blocks at a time. Let go of shift and then you can, you can place it. So make sure that, that, um, that, the, that these, whatever you want, inside of these is inside of there. You don't you don't want to throw one of these in there. Um, accidentally thrown inside. Okay. So let's run that. So this otherwise if it's good. Why do I use this? Well this if has to do with the x x direction. And I use otherwise if because it also has to do with the x direction. And otherwise, so it's good to connect all these three together. Like I said, there's other ways of doing it that it does work, but now I can move back and forth, and I'm good to go. So press Control K, cleans it up, and now I'll leave it up to you to finish off this to move up and down in the Y direction. Another thing, it's always good to name your events, so I want to call this four direction. Four direction. You know, movement or something like that. It might be a little on the larger side, but you can always extend that out. Okay. So, thank you for watching. I will be making a video for the extra activities as well.